Good day everyone. I'm going to be uh, showing you how to use the warp tool in 3D Code. I'm also going to be using Blender and Shipwright to create some sci-fi objects. Uh, hope this helps everybody learn. If you like the video, please subscribe. It helps me continue to create uh, content. Anyway, thank you. Alright, so I'm in version uh, Blender 3.3. Uh, Case Echoes is what I'm using. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to be loading up the uh, program that comes with um, Shipwright. It's a blend file which is called Shipwright 2.0.0 blend. And um, when you load this object up, it comes as an, uh, an object that came with. I normally save as so that way I don't corrupt this thing. So always do a save as when you first bring it in. So you can actually manipulate it and not cause it to change the uh, the main object. Otherwise, you have to re-download it. Um, so this is conversion, say, 3. Say so save as, wherever you put it, just make sure you know where it's at. Okay, so that's that. And then if you go into the, um, the actual viewport shading, um, this kind of shows you kind of what it looks like uh, with um, textures on it. It comes with normally three textures and it comes with three different levels. Um, I'm going to bring this out just a little bit more so you can see. So this is uh, one. Uh, basically the, the, uh, the size of this is at one. This is 0.5. This is 0.25. Um, personally, I try to get rid of some of this extra detail. You can, of course, leave whatever you want. Um, there's also a master seed here, which is kind of like the seed that you can go to to get variations. So in here, um, I'm just going to uh, start with zero. And there's a thing in here called iterations, which is you can set this to zero and then 50 or 30 or whatever you want to put in. And it'll go through a whole bunch of different variations of this model and different sizes. Um, just keep in mind that when you actually select this, this takes for a, a long time to go through each one of these. Um, you're talking like for 50 is probably like 45 to an hour. It, it does take time. Um, so maybe just do like five at first, but it gives you all kinds of variations to look at. We could also just, you know, add numbers in here and it does it for you kind of. So if I put like a 19 in here, it will change the uh, dimensions of this object, as you see. Um, so it just depends what you want, what the look that you want to use. Um, I'm going to try to use another number here. Let's try 13. Get some different shapes. So this is kind of cool. I like the fact that it has um, the size. But one thing I'm going to get rid of is I'm going to get rid of the medium. I just don't want that detail. So you could just say X. You could also add more stuff if you want right here in the Add section. So that's kind of what I was looking for, a little bit more detail. I want to also reduce this down just a little bit. Get a different shape. And my, my goal here is to create the shape and then bring it into 3D Coat to warp it around. So it's like a circular warp um, to create a cool sci-fi looking object or basically like a stand or a cone of some sort. Um, okay, so let's keep going with this thing. So there's also a section here called Join. That's where you actually um, collapse the whole thing and it takes away Basically, all these things, it actually converts it all so the object is clean, ready to go. So if you want the blockiness added to your object, you just leave it as is. If you don't like the blockiness, you can take this off by actually going down to the bottom here. to the six add plates. And once you take the add plates off, it still looks like it's blocky, but it's actually just the texture that's on this object. So it's actually smoother. Um, personally, that's... Uh, Depends what you want to do, of course. If you want blockiness, that's fine. So I'll add plates. Um, you can actually change the depth of these plates. So I'll, I'll change it down to like maybe 2%. So it's not as thick. And that kind of changes some of these things too because I was actually on the, I was on the big one, but it actually changes these things as well. It always does that. Um, so it's a little finicky on things, but I'll also change that to two. Okay, so that's that. Now, I kind of want something a little bit thicker. Um, so I'm going to keep going with this. 
Let's do a different number here. Oh, that's really thick. <laughs> Just go through it, see what you like. Oh, this looks pretty cool. So this is going to have a nice little um, bottom edge and top edge. Um, okay, so I'm going to go with this. I like the detail. Um, so one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to now um, select the lattice. This actually helps you uh, create this to form a little bit. So one thing to keep in mind is keep the center alone. If you move that at all, it actually pulls it away from the other side of the object. So keep that in mind. So I'm going to edit, edit object, edit mode. And I'm going to actually um, select these points here. I'm going to select these points here, hit the shift key. And then I'm going to move these a little bit farther out. I'm just kind of want to get a nice curvature. Um, another thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually create and bring this downward. Give it a little bit of a, a radius. And one more thing here I'm going to do is just take this. I'm going to move this out just a smidgen as well. All right, so that's that. Um, so that looks pretty cool. I like the, the detail here. Um, all right, so one thing you can do is um, you can take this object and just bring it right over. Um, I'm going to go over here to this section here. It says overlays. It actually gives you... The amount of uh, polygons that you're working with. So when you select, let's go back to object mode, and you select the object, it's basically about 9,256 polygons, which is really low. Um, again, it depends what you're creating, but for this, um, I'm actually going to create a very smooth, detailed object. And to do that, I actually will go into, um, first I'm going to actually, now that I like what I see, I'm going to go ahead and convert this over. So like we talked about earlier, you're going to go in here and say collapse ship right. So once you hit that, hit twice. Now you see all the modifiers have been added. Okay, so that's that. So this is one object. So I'm going to save as, So in case I want to keep it as this, but save as ship right. Uh, we'll call this um, ship one blocky. Just so I know it's a little bit blocky. Um, save as. All right, so that's that. Now, another one to do is to actually convert this now. You can do this by a couple different ways. Um, you can add your own modifiers, or you can actually um, get a couple different plugins that are really helpful. Um, basically, um, one uh, thing that's really easy to use is, is KitOps. Uh, there's a thing called, um, I'll go there right now, it is called uh, deform magic um, you can see right here add meta shape this thing will convert it for you um, but keep in mind that that is a paid add-on I think uh, you can actually get part of this for free too but this is a really great program though it helps uh, do a lot of things for you a lot of things you can add as well to your object so it's definitely worth the money in my opinion but anyway I keep going uh, the other one is you can actually get um, simply concept is another program that's really great. You just select it and it converts it for you. You can add more objects to it. Again, another similar as the KitOps one. And it's also really good as well. Uh, but if you don't have those plugins, you can just do it yourself. So keep in mind this is pretty intensive on a computer. Um, so let's go with it. So I'm going to add a modifier. And the first thing I'm going to do is hit. Well, before I do that, actually, I'm going to go in here. There's a thing called 3D Print. Now, if you go to Edit, preferences in here you look for 3d 3d and then uh, dash print there's this 3d print toolbox make sure that's checked because if you don't have that on here it's gonna be hard to get that um, this helps you make sure that everything is manifolded and closed up so I'm going ahead and once you select that make sure you save it here in auto save preferences if you don't have that selected, then you gotta keep making sure that you save. So right now it is auto save, so I'm good to go. Um, so let's close that out. Let's go ahead and 3D print, and let's check the whole object. So I'm doing that. Takes a second. So there's 88 sections that are kind of not uh, manifolded properly. So if you go to clean up here, hit make manifold, that actually fixes it. Now if you check again, after it stops 
it says zero, so we're good. So everything's closed up. Now that's the first step. Now let's go to modifiers. So let's go add modifier, remesh. And as you see, it's at point 0.1, which is not a lot of detail. It gives you a real blocky object. And it looks really crappy, actually. But it depends what you're trying to do. If this is far, far away, I don't think it would matter. But for this uh, tutorial, I'm going to make sure this looks really clean. Another thing I'm going to do is add it here as a um, smooth modifier. So that would be the next thing. So hit that. And in here, in the factor, I'll put in 2. And then in here, on the actual repeat section, I'm going to put in about 50 to make it nice and smooth. You see now the form is really weird. Uh, this is really cool to make uh, organic shapes, though. It's uh, something to think about. But for now, this tutorial, we're going to continue. So one thing you can do is you can start adding zeros to this to add more detail. So we'll go a step at a time just to show you kind of what it does and how the polygons react. So now this is at uh, point 0.1. It went up to 365 polygons, basically. That's quite a few, but again, it's not giving me that same form that I originally saw. So I want it to be really smooth because, again, you're going to take it into um, 3D code. It's going to be voxelized anyway. It's going to be similar to this. So it's good to see what you're looking for. I'm going to go ahead and bump this up to, like, I know I'm going to go with 0.08 to start with just to get it down farther. And if that still gives me um, a lot more detail, but if you still want more, it still looks very really blocky. I'm going to go down to probably, like, as again here see the faces now 583 I'm going to make this like 5 and be careful of this if you go down too low it will stop your whole system depends on your computer and you know the ability for it to crash is always concerning um, it's just going to take a second all right so as you see that's now 1 5 still looking kind of these things are a little bit off so I'm going to go to at least one more. I'll go four. Okay, so four worked. I'd probably go with three, but again, some people, uh, people's computers will blow up if they go to three, maybe two, especially. It starts getting way up there in the faces um, and it takes a long time. So I'm just going to stick with this for now. Um, one thing I do is I can get rid of these little sections when I get ready. Um, so, okay, so we're in here. One thing we got to do now is we actually have to go to object mode section. Um, and make sure we select object. I'm going to convert this to a mesh. So what this does, it takes away all these things. Now, if you don't like the way it looks and it needs to be more um, smooth, you can actually um, make that higher. Again, this, this all takes time. So every time you do that, it really brings your computer down. All right. For my taste, I'm actually going to go to um, 0 0.003 just because my computer can handle it, but Again, expect this to take a few minutes to to work okay so this is much better um, almost doubled the actual amount of polys but it actually has a lot more um, detail to it which is nice I'm still gonna get rid of these things these are not gonna look good when I convert it um, everything else looks really cool so let's go ahead and continue with this process all right so next step is to actually convert this so I'm gonna object Again, go to convert, hit mesh, and select. Now this is going to take a little bit of time. It has to go in and convert this into the module. And this will now become basically a 4,255,000 face uh, object, which is fine. I'm going to actually take this down back in decimation uh, just to kind of lighten it down a little bit so it's not such a big file size. Um, it'll you can actually leave it as is and bring it in, but it takes a while to bring in. Um, and you can also increase it within 3D code. So either way it works. Alrighty, so it converted everything. We got four million. Now I'm gonna go back to modifiers and I'm gonna decimate this thing down. It's way too heavy. So I do this at a little bit at a time because if you do too much, it just, it really, um, it could actually cause it to crash. I first start off with 0.1 just to bring it down. This will really reduce that as amount of polys. And then once you do that, we'll convert it. So I'm gonna hit enter again. Okay, what I've done is um, I've actually went down to point 0.1, which brings it down to 849,000 polygons, which is quite a bit less than 4 million sub polys. So 
one thing I also did was I went to MatCap just to see what this kind of looks like. So I selected this and selected this and basically with the MatCap I also added cavity just to see what we're looking at and the way this is going to kind of come together. You see it has some really cool lines. So good with that. So let's keep proceeding. So once you did the first decimate, now you need to apply it. It goes this way. I'll just make it so much lighter. Now if you kind of look at this, this is still a lot, a lot polygon so I'm going to continue to, to clean this up so let's go ahead and hit apply um, the first time you hit this it takes quite a bit the second time it's a lot quicker but keep in mind um, you should save your work constantly um, so you can go back especially right before you hit some of these uh, major um, changes on your model um, just a word of advice because it, it will take your system down and you can crash sometimes um, I don't recommend using a lot of other things while you're doing this as well Okay, it finished up and back at it. So now I'm going to add another modifier again, decimate. And this time I'm going to go down to like 0.5. That will reduce quite a bit of the polish. I don't want to go too far down because I'm still going to have to bring this up no matter what I do. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And you'll see that this one will not take nearly as much time. It's very quick. It looks a lot better. Let's go back to this mode without this and it still looks good kind of keep an eye on it it starts really deforming um, then I recommend to back off a little bit on that down to 425 faces go ahead and hit apply and you see it's not too long now keep looking at this thing we're going to bring it down just a little bit more and modifier decimate it keeps getting faster and faster because once you do it a few times it, it just much quicker that's at 212 I'm, I'm good with that I think that's plenty all right so let's go and accept this apply now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this object and export it so so let's take this file export you could do either OBJ or FBX, but I'll go with the uh, OBJ uh, option. Select this. I'm going to call this the same that name so I don't get confused. Uh, select it only. Export WAV file. That's it. So, now we're going to go into 3D Coat. So I'll close this down. I already got this open. So I'm using um, 2022 version 0.47. Even though the version is keep changing, it's pretty similar. Um, I'm going to use a box of sculpting. I'm going to go with the grid. And so now I'm in sculpt section. Now, what the next thing is, I'm going to bring in or import this in. Import mesh for voxelation. All right, so the last one I did was this one. Just bring it in. Boom. As you see, it's only 70 polygons, very small. I'll, I'll do an auto scale. And now we're at 424. It's still too small. I try to get to around two and a half million um, is what I normally do. So I'll keep it at auto scale, but I'm going to start going down to the bottom here and go to the section here. It says uh, Res Plus. So I'm going to add more detail to this. I'm going to go up at least um, probably two times. Okay, so that's, that's quite a bit higher than I wanted. But another thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to go in here just to see what I'm doing. I'm going to actually... Um, add a little bit of um, subdivide to make it smoother and I'll do this basically once and then another time one more time that gives it like more of a smooth look takes a second the second time I wouldn't recommend a third time third time might crash you <laughs> it's pretty intensive all right so that's that now I'm going to go ahead and add apply add make sure it's on add if it's trapped you're not going to see anything it takes a second, six something million polys. However, with 3D coat, it's much easier to handle higher polys. So I'm going to say yes for the first time. And that's your object. So, a few things I'm going to be doing is uh, manipulating this a little bit differently. So I'm going to go to the right view here, go to the right. In this way, um, I'm also take this perspective off, uh, transform tool. So select that. And now I'm going to bring this up. Here's your axis right here. I'll bring up a little bit more. I don't want to go too far out. I want to be able to 
make this kind of cool looking here. So it depends how if you, the higher you make it, the more um, sections you have to add to it. So uh, one thing I like to do on something like this is I like to have it either curve up or down. So I'm going to go back to front view, right view, sorry. I'm going to rotate this down a little bit. can't see it right here, but it's right here. Make sure it's yellow when you do this. Bring this down. So that, that's going to be the inner. One thing too, I'm going to cut that right there. I just don't like that. I'm going to also center this off the center axis, just like that. All right. So now that's done. Let's go ahead and go into the cut tool. It's right in here. Cut off. Bam. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just okay. That's better. All right. Let's see how that looks. It looks looking better. You can also do some other things to this if you wanted to. So if I go to go back to Vox Hide, this is really cool too. So that'd be faster. All right. So that you've done this, you can go in here and make front view, and you can do something like this. And we're going to hit the Control key, so that way it goes back into play. There's that. So that looks better. Let me go back to front view. I'll also do something like this. Let's just do this. Okay, go back to front view. A little bit higher. Let's go about right about here. See how that looks. Well, okay, that's looking pretty cool. Alright. So let's go with this. Let's go back to right tool. And there we go. So this is gonna be the fun part. So we're gonna take this object, we're gonna rotate it around, and we're gonna come up with some pretty cool farms. So one thing is the warp tool. So if you select this. Um, you gotta make sure it's on the right um, turning. I always put this at maybe three first to see what I'm looking for. Sometimes I like three. Just depends. Now, if this is like looks like it's backwards and you can see through it, I recommend just changing this to negative 360. This will take it back for you, so it looks right. And then one thing to keep in mind is it takes those three objects and it's right now using this tool which is the overlap section. Now be careful with this. Um, I would also say before you start handling some of this stuff, if you go too fast on this, it will create a crash. So I'm gonna save as, we'll call this uh, ship, one, two, save. And once you've done that, then you can start manipulating this because you could crash your system if you're not careful. But see, if you go down, it actually takes it and takes the uh, radius out of it, which is something you might want. You might want more of that shape of that ship. And if you do, then you can always add more segments for it to catch up. Then you could actually now start bringing this back in, add more shape. You could actually start getting these things to kind of collide together, a form, an object that has some coolness to it. All right, so trying to create something like this from scratch would be incredibly hard. Um, this is a way, good way to look at it. Um, you can also maneuver it around, but yeah, trying to trying to create something like this would be almost impossible. Um, it take forever and it'd be hard to um, meld or weld these together. I mean it could be done. You could also do this in um, KitOps uh, within the magic uh, design magic section. That, that's an option. Um, but 
it is pretty intensive. Same thing as this, but anyway, this is I just like the 3D coat, so uh, work around. As you see, it it came out pretty cool. Um, okay, if you want to see um, some of the texturing options here, I'll go ahead and create that as well. So now I'm actually back in here. I'm going to actually um, go in and save. So make sure you save constantly. Um, and one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the apply now. If you don't hit the apply, then it will stay as is. It won't it won't be right when you convert it. As you see, it's quite a 40 million polygons, quite a few. But hit the apply if you like what you see. It actually create five sections basically. And then I'll actually add them all together. So I'm going to pause this for now. It takes a few seconds for this. Okay, so it's actually converted into one object now, which is um, four times. And as you see, it has a lot of detail to it. Um, I could never imagine trying to model this thing without some tools like this. Anyway, um, looking pretty cool. So this could be like a tip of a laser gun, or it could be part of a rocket, or it could be part of a ship. Um, just a lot of things you could use for something like this. Very, very different looking. Um, so anyway, uh, one thing you can do is bring this down if you want. Um, I'll keep it as is, but 36 million polygons. Um, one thing you could do is just go down in here and resample this thing. It is pretty intensive heavy. You could try this to see how this will look if you bring it down. Uh, let's try like 20 million. And see how that looks. So we'll go with that. Hit OK. And see how that will look. Okay, took it down to 20 million. And it's not looking too bad, uh, honestly. So it is lighter now. It actually still has a lot of detail. I'm good with this. I mean, it does take some of the form out of it, which is fine. You could also go in and actually hit the smooth tool once or so if you want. I'm, I'm okay with this though. So next step is to actually bring this down to something manageable. Um, so I'm going to retopple this. So we'll go through that process as well. So let's go ahead and right click on here, say retopple. I'm going to do via decimation. Um, this object is not going to be twisted, formed. It's just going to be a hard shape. So I don't really care about um, the placement of the polys, most, mostly. So, this will take a little bit of time. So we top those. So, 40,000 will not get you there. Um, it's going to look not good at all. This is at least um, maybe 300,000 polys to get the form. That will look nice. So, I'll, I'll change this down to at least, uh, man, maybe four. Go 438. So let's go with that. So say okay. And this will take some time. Okay, so now it comes up with this um, dialogue. The decimation is too dense, of course, um, which is over 50,000 triangles. I'm okay with that. So I'm just going to say okay. And again, it starts reading an object. And this will take a little bit of time, but it does a great job. Um, one thing to keep in mind just make sure your symmetry is off. If that's on, it'll cause all kinds of weird stuff to happen. So if you look at this now, this this gives a lot of detail even at that many polys. And we want to make sure that it's not too heavy because it's going to be hard to, to work with later on. I think this pretty much gave a good shape to this. I think uh, I'm definitely good with this. Let's go ahead and um, pretty much done with the actual retopo. So we're good. So now we're in retopo mode. Uh, the next step is to paint it. So one thing you gotta do is you gotta bake this object. So let's bake. Bake with normal map per pixel. This is what I normally pick. Um, this will get you where you need to be to make it look nice. I don't think it worked. Let me try again. There we go. So one thing I'll do is I'll take this lower. I'll do like two. And then here two. And say okay. And it's going to go through the process of now you being it and baking it, which is really cool. Um, one thing is, if you want a lot of detail, I would go with 4096 if you really want to make it nice with your textures. 
good with that. Okay, that finished the actual um, UV and all that stuff. So if you go to paint mode now, um, you'll see that everything's been um, textured for you. Um, some of the first things that I will do now, just to make it look better, is I'll go in and go to edit, and I'll actually do the calculate occlusion. This will take some time. So hit sphere. I'm going to do sphere and hemisphere all around. So I think that looked good. 4096 again. Say so, okay. Take some time. So be patient. Okay. So this is now created the uh, curvature occlusion map on this. As you can see in layers here, you now have the uh, ambient occlusion. Uh, one thing I'm going to also do is um, next step would be to actually add in a um, a calculate curvature. Just take some time. Hit enter. Again, I'm going to do sphere, sphere hemisphere, and say OK. OK, now I've actually added the other layer, which is the lighting layer. Um, so here I'm going to actually add in an additional um, layer. And this way, this is the layer I'm going to actually start texturing. I'm also going to save so I don't lose anything they have done so far. Don't want to go backwards. <laughs> Okay, so one thing you could do is actually go into um, the actual um, sculpt section. And we can hide this object because now we're dealing with the painted one. So we go back to paint. It's still there. You know it's still there. So uh, this is kind of what we're looking at. Uh, so anyway, this is um, just to make sure everything's working good here. All right, let's start painting this thing. Okay, so now I'm not in texture mode. I'm going to go to this uh, little icon here. I'm going to select the metal that I created before. This gives you a good look at what you're looking at. I'm going to go over a lot of the texture and stuff. That would be another video. Okay, so that's what the texture is going to look like. I'm actually going to go in there and manipulate this a little bit more. I kind of like it, but I just want to take a little bit of the metal away. So you can go in here, duplicate this, right click, actually there you go. So now I'm in here, you can actually change the amount of edge scatter. I go in here and I, I can change this, the degree, really that's the biggest thing. Not too much, and here the degree. A bit less. I think that looks better. Okay. So now I like that. I'm going to make this more metal looking. Like this. A bit of roughness to it. Alright. So I'm going to save this. And I'm going to use the fill brush to create this real quickly. All right, there you go. So a good way to look at this is to bring this into the render mode, see what you got. Um, take off the uh, grid. Don't need to see that anymore. All right, looking good. Hope you liked the video. Please subscribe. Thanks.